Hey guys, how you doing? This is Mangrit Section. I'm here today to bring you the review for One Piece Manga Chapter 837. So, for me, this chapter further illustrates, um, further illustrates an important point that Luffy is not ready to take on a Yonko. And the thought of that alone excites me. It really does excite me because I want to see how he becomes stronger than the Yonko, when he's going to become stronger than the Yonko, what exactly does Luffy have to do to reach Yonko level, but more closer to home. How is he going to save Sanji? How is he going to get to Sanji? How is he going to make out there in one piece, pun intended? Because there's no way... This chapter, like I said, this chapter further illustrates this point. The majority of this chapter is spent on Luffy versus Cracker, and he gets his butt handed to him. He gets shown the level, he is put in his place. Luffy is struggling. Luffy has to go all out with a commander or executive, whatever they, whatever terminology they want to use for him. But the fact is, Luffy had to go. Or now he gets in a King Kong gun and judging by the end panels it looks like this knocks him out but so what? So what? The fact that Luffy had to go gear 4 alone is a problem. Even if the attack knocked him out, how much do you want to want to bet? Next chapter he gets back up again. When gear 4 was first introduced, when he hit I'd swear he hit Dolph with a king with a um look, Kongon, Kongon. I swear he hit a dope with a Kongon. I'm about to kick Kongon for cracker, but Kongon, that's what he used. I swear he hit Dolphy with that first attack. That attack knocked Dolphy out. Because when he was coming when he knocked him across the um Dress Rosa and he's lying on the floor and the citizens of Dress Rosa asking Dolphy, what are you doing here? He's like, I was gonna ask I was gonna ask you the same question. He passed out for a few seconds. Just to make it even worse, that a clock that attack sent Dolphy flying. Cracker didn't move. I bet you money if he is knocked out, he's gonna be here for a few seconds and he's gonna get back up. So this is just crazy. This is just crazy right now. <laughs> and just ah oh, like I don't even know what to say, but uh, this is I just move on a bit. So within the chapter, through blurry, we find out because this this whole chapter, <laughs> this whole chapter is about emphasizing the fact that nobody, no no one in the worst generation, and people probably consider Luffy the strongest of the worst generation, is ready for a Yonko. We find out that Scratch and Pooh has passed through Big Mom's territory in the past. We knew Kid put, had passed through. Big Mom's territory in the past. We found out the monk, I can't remember his name, has passed through Big Mom's territory in the past, and there's a fourth one. Oh, Capone has passed through Big Mom's territory in the past, and they could all do nothing. They could, no one could reach Big Mom. The closest they have gotten, and this is not as a team, this is just the captain and his crew have gotten to get into Big Mom was the monk. The monk was able to take out one of the executives or commanders, I can't remember what terminology they used, but he was able to take out one, only for Cracker to then come in there and take out the monk. And now Blue, who does say something interesting, where she said, I think the, um, like his body is probably still within those woods, but we have later seen him like on the sky island, I think on the sky island, in the clouds basically, recovering, so that must be what he was recovering from. But he was managed to take out an executive, then to get taken out by Cracker. So that's kind of making me think that maybe this monk is the stronger, like one of the strongest of the West Generation because I always saw him as one of the lower tier ones. Like if you had to list out all the supernovas of the West Generation, whatever you want to call them, I'd have put him at one of the lowest and like kid at one of the top. And it was kind of, it's kind of assumed from the law kid and the few burst marines that these three were level. So the fact that kid couldn't take out a commander or get even get to a commander and the monk could it kind of puts makes me put him above kid now so it would be like the monk the kid i mean monk kid and then luffy so 
Is the monk the strongest supernova? That's a question. Oh, that is actually up for a topic, but for debate. I just can't wait to see what Ayonko can do, if I'm honest. Because the way I see it is, is this. It is commanders and underlings that are causing the supernovas to act certain ways. Because we know Scratch, we know Kid. I'm just going to use the examples given in the chat. We know these two, probably from the experiences trying to take, trying to get to a Yonko, that they decided to form alliances. And now, for me personally, if I was to judge by Kid pre time skip, who was a cocky guy, who went straight into the new world on a cocky hype, and you told me then, Kids can actually end up in their lines. Others said, "No, no way! You're joking, not kid. He's not that type of guy." But his influence, his um experiences, trying to get to a Yonko made him realize, "Yo, maybe I'm not a, as big as a boss as I thought I am. I need more help than I have." Scratch for me personally was all a bit of a win, especially when he attacked Kizaru and ran. So I'm not too surprised that he got. Actually, I'm more surprised that he never ended up thinking, yo, I need to join the Yonko, because we have then have Capone, who just completely paganed out, and, like, I need to sign on the Yonko and straight away. So, like, it's just, oh, I need to see what a Yonko can do. But I'm going to leave it, I'm going to keep this track, keep this short, and leave it at this. So, questions for you guys, the audience. Do you think... Capone, not Capone, um, the monk is stronger than Luffy. Question number two, how? How is Luffy going to save Sanji? Because cause even if he had his whole crew there, including like a clone Sanji, I don't know, he wouldn't be able to save Sanji. And just right now, he does not have the manpower to do this. It's like, it's just Luffy, basically, because Chopper is no help, Brooke is no help, Nami, no help whatsoever, Pedro, no help, Carrot, no help. So who does he have? Jimby? For all we know, he's dead right now. <laughs> Sanji can't go too far because of his restraints. So how? How does, how does this art get resolved? And I just can't wait. This this was a good chapter, a very good chapter. I enjoyed it a lot. And this makes me want more right now and just to see what's gonna happen, how things are gonna turn out. Of course guys, I'm asking for your thoughts and opinions. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. But most importantly, take care, have a nice day.